Good day, children. I am Doug Smith. I happen to be Miss Griffith's father. And I'm going to read the book of Stone Soup by John J. Murray. Three monks, Hawk, Locke, and Suey, traveled, traveled along a mountain road. They talked about cat whispers, the color of the sun, and giving. What makes one happy, Suey? asked Hawk, the youngest monk. Old Suey, who was the wisest, said, Well, let's find out. And there's the three monks walking on the mountain trail. The sound of a bell brought their gaze to the rooftops of the village below. They could not see from that high that the village had been through many hard times. It had been through famine, floods, and war, and it had made the villagers weary and untrusting. They had even become suspicious of their neighbors. Here's the mountain there on. The villagers worked hard, but only for themselves. There was a farmer, a tea merchant, a seamstress, a doctor, a carpenter, and many others. But they had little to do with each other. You see? When the monks reached the foot of the mountain, the villagers disappeared into their houses. No one came to the gates to greet them. And when the people saw them enter the village, they closed their windows tight. That's the village wall. The monks knocked on the door of the first house. There was no, no answer. Then the house went dark. They knocked on a second door and the same thing happened. It happened again and again from one house to the next. These people do not know happiness, they all agreed. But today, said Sui, his face as bright as the moon, we will show them how to make stone soup. And there they are in the village. Mmm, stone soup. What think I want stone soup? They gathered twigs and branches and made a fire. They placed a small tin pot on top and filled it with water from the village well. A brave little girl who had been watching came to them. What are you doing, she asked. Well, we're getting twigs. We're making a fire. We are making stone soup, and we need three round, smooth stones, said Sue. Three stones. The little girl ran home. As she started to take a pot, did I, miss, did I turn two pages? Let me see if I see it. Okay, let's see. I, did, I didn't turn two pages. Got mm. We're going to teach them how to make stone soup. And there they are with their stone soup. <laughs> I got tea. The little girl helped the monks look around the courtyard until they found just the right ones. Then they put them in the water to cook. These stones will make excellent soup, said Sue, but this very small pot won't make much. My mother has a bigger pot, 
said the girl. There they are. And where's the little pot at? Sweet. There's the little pot. It's not big enough for much soup, is it? Okay. And there's the three stones. Okay. The little girl ran home. As she started to take a pot, her mother asked what she was doing. Those three strangers are making soup from stones, she said. They need our biggest pot. Hmm, said the girl's mother. Stones are easy to come by. I'd like to learn how to do that. The monks, piped, the monks poked the coals. A smoke drifted up. The neighbors peered up from their windows. The fire in the large pot in the middle of the village was a true curiosity. One by one, the people of the villages came out to see just what this stone soup was. Now, there's a pot. There's a pot. And there's the villagers looking out the windows. They won't see. Okay, let's see what stone soup's going to be. Of course, old stone, old style stone soup should be well seasoned with salt and pepper. Well, that is true, said Locke, as he stirred the giant pot filled with water and stones. But we have none. I have some salt and pepper, said the scholar, his eyes big with curiosity. He disappeared and came back with salt, pepper, and a few other spices. So he took a taste. The last time we had soup stones of this size, carrots made the broth very sweet. Carrots, said a woman from her back. I may have a few, but just a few. And off she ran. She returned with as many carrots as she could carry and dropped them into the pot. And there's the pot. And there's the carrots. They want to have carrots soon. Okay. Do you think it would be better with some onions? Asked Hawk. Oh, yes. Maybe an onion would taste good. And he hurried off. He returned in a moment with five big onions, and he dropped them into the bubbling soup. Now, that's a fine soup, he said. The villagers all nodded their heads as the smell was very agreeable. Well, if we only had some mushrooms, said Sue, mm, rubbing his chin. Several villagers licked their lips. A few dashed away and returned with fresh mushrooms, noodles, pea pods, and cabbages. And what is that? They even put the dog in the dog. Well, it's, a, it's a cat, a cat, a curious cat. Something magical began to happen among the villagers as each person opened their heart to deal. The next person gave even more. And as this happened, the soup grew richer and smelled more delicious. I imagine the emperor would suggest we add dumplings, said one villager. And bean curd, said another. What about cloud ear and moon beans and yams, cried some others, and taro root and winter melon and baby corn, cried another villages. Garlic, ginger root, soy salt, lily buds. I have some, I have some, people cried out, and off they ran, returning with all they could carry. The monk stirred and the pot bubbled. How good it smelled. How good it would taste. How giving these villagers had become. And there they are, looking around the pot. Oh my. And there they are. All the villagers coming back with their soup and greetings. At last, the soup was ready. The villagers 
gathered together, gathered together. They brought rice and, and streamed buns. They brought litchi nuts and sweet cakes. They brought tea, and they all lit lanterns. Everyone sat down to eat. They had not been together for a feast like this for as long as anyone could remember. The what? Feast they made. And that started with stone soup. Stone soup. After the banquet, they took stones. They, uh, after, after the banquet, they told stories, sang songs, and celebrated long into the night. Then they unlocked their doors and took the monks into their homes and gave them a very comfortable places to sleep. In the gentle spring morning, everyone gathered near the willows to say farewell. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for having us as your guest, said the monks. You have been most generous. Thank you, said the villagers. With the gifts you have given, we will always have plenty. You have shown us that sharing makes us all richer. And to think, said the monks, to be, ha to be happy is as simple. It's making stone soup. That's it.